What's going on guys? Welcome back in to End on a Make, where today I just wanted to talk a little bit about something that has been kind of dominating headlines and, and the news cycle the last couple days, and it's the all NBA 75 list. So it's the 75th anniversary of the NBA, and to celebrate it, they decided to put out this list of the 75 best players in NBA history. <laughs> And when you get into lists and stuff like that, it gets a little tricky. Um, and the way they determined this list was they had writers, former coaches, coaches, players, former players, all sorts of people um, vote. And then they counted up the ballots and put together the top 75. And I don't know if there was like a, it has to be a set number from this era, from this era, from this era. Um, and essentially, eventually what it turned into was it was the same first 50 as the NBA 50th anniversary team. And they just added 25 more players from the last 25 years. And it's created a huge debate. <laughs> it's created a lot, of, a lot of issues. Some of the players that were left off were incredibly, um, I'm not going to say mad, but like felt really disrespected by it. And that's kind of the issue that you get into with these lists, especially when you have players that are still playing. Like, to see someone like Damian Lillard make it or Chris Paul make it, like, yes, they have, like, really good accolades, but then you look at someone, you know, that doesn't make the list, that's like Clay Thompson or Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili, it gets really hard because, you know, are you valuing regular season stats? Are you valuing postseason? Are you value like, is it championship rings? Like, what is the the big thing for you to to make this list if you're a player like someone like Clay Thompson who's like well I've won three rings and like I'm widely considered one of the best shooters ever and I'm not one of the 75 best players to be in the NBA like it's just tough it's tough to to try to sit down and quantify those things and I usually try to just ignore these types of lists because I think that Obviously, people get left off on purpose for clickbait reasons to kind of kind of just build more buzz and generate that conversation and get their post and their list seen by more people. So you just leave off a couple of really good players or you like completely tweak your rankings compared to someone else's. And there you go. You have basically, you know, the top story for the next day or two while people argue about it and while people try to, you know, point out how stupid the list makers are for for having such a dumb list or such a big snub. But with the NBA 75 team, some of the snubs are are huge. So like I said, Clay Thompson, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, Pau Gasol, Tracy McGrady, Dwight Howard, like massive snubs. And Dwight Howard in particular is one that has, has gotten a lot of conversation because he did not make the team, but Anthony Davis did. And if you look at the, the careers and the resumes side by side, if you're going purely on accolade, Dwight Howard should be on this list. He was an unbelievable center in his prime. He dominated the NBA for like half a decade. And he, I believe that five straight years, he was all NBA first team. He was unstoppable. He willed that Orlando team to the finals, beat LeBron and the Cavs to get there. I mean, we don't have to, well, we should talk about what happened in that finals. Um, I'll just leave it at that. But it to me, it feels like a lot of this list came down to narratives and it takes the talent right out of the discussion. So Dwight Howard has the last couple years he's had where he bounced from team to team, had this poor reputation before finally, you know, rejoining the Lakers and completely redeeming himself in the eyes of the league. And finally winning a title with the team and, and, you know, really changing the discussion around him and his legacy even. And it feels like, you know, if he didn't have that few years where he was bouncing around the league and had all this negative publicity and such a bad reputation, that he would be a no-brainer for this. So, like, the only thing I can think that would keep him off of this list is, you know, the narrative that he wasn't a team player or that he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a traditional star. And, you know, narrative kind of extends to other guys. So, like, I think about someone like Clay Thompson or someone like Pau Gasol, 
who are multiple time champions who are widely you know credited and loved and lauded by players and by fans and you know by pretty much everyone like a universal approval rating for both of them but they don't make it because they're seen as you know the second or third fiddle and that's really tough that's tough to you know sit down and say we're going to have these these players in but you're not going to get in even though you have the rings and the things that we would want in like a hall of fame you're not going to make the the nba 75 list it just seems really weird it seems backwards to me and then the last thing that really bothers me about you know doing lists like this specifically for like an all-time type of list is some of these players are still playing so you have people like Bill Simmons who voted for Luka Doncic to be on this team who is in year four right now of his career like who knows what he's going to be in you know nine ten years when he's you know when he's older when his career is close to done who knows what it's going to look like is he going to be a multiple time champion is he going to be an mvp is he going to be like a oh man what if like that's like saying like what if zion like vote zion to the all 75 team because you know he might have a really good career i'm sure if derrick rose <laughs> was uh if this list was being made right after he won youngest mvp ever I'm sure they'd probably be like, we need Derrick Rose on this list, we can tell. And like, you can't tell. And that's the issue with trying to compare players against each other when the careers are still in progress and still being written. I believe that, you know, this list, this 75, should be players that you cannot, absolutely not, tell the history of the NBA about without mentioning these 75 players. And, you know, for the most part, I agree with, with who is on here. I don't think kids are going to be running to YouTube to look up grainy Dave Bing highlights. Um, but, you know, that's not, that's not my job. It's not my job to oversee this list. It just, to me, seems really odd to basically do this just to create a controversy when this whole thing is supposed to be celebrating 75 years of the league. And I think about something that I heard in an interview that um, the Pat McAfee show did with the guy who runs the NFL Hall of Fame, David Baker. And he basically was saying, you know, it's hard because not everyone can be in the Hall of Fame. Like, that's why it's a Hall of Fame. But he was saying that every player in the NFL is archived and has a spot in the building. So maybe they're not featured as a, like, Hall of, Hall of Famer. But they're going to be there because, according to him, you can't tell the story of the NFL without the players that were in it. And that's kind of, you know, once I heard that, that kind of shaped how I started to think about it, too, where it's like you can't tell the story of the NBA without Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili and Dwight Howard and Pau Gasol and Clay Thompson and Tracy McGrady. And there's the list goes on and on with players that are not on this 75. So... I think it's something in the end that's going to have just been, you know, it existed just to drive conversation and just to, you know, get extra publicity. But that sucks because there's, you know, there's players that there's players that have, you know, legacy to build off of this. Like so now someone that is a multiple champion or like they have to sit there and be like, "Oh, well, I guess I wasn't you know, as good as I thought, or I guess I wasn't, and like this, this list doesn't matter, but this type of thinking is what leads to things like the All-NBA teams, and like the All-Star votes, and like all of that, and that like actively affects players' money, and that's not something that I think anyone should have a chance to meddle in, like people should not be responsible for other people's contracts and money, and that's where I think it's a slippery slope. Um, I'll post the link to the full list of 75 let me know in the comments who you think is the biggest snub or what you would do differently to you know kind of make sure that that stuff like this like stupid conversation starters like this don't like get out of hand like this like how can a, how can you do a list like this without people being disrespected because it really seems like you get down to a point where it's like, why are we trying to split hairs like this? Like, why don't we just celebrate? And, oh, I almost forgot. It's not even 75. It's the NBA 75 list. 
but it's 76 names because there was a tie. What? So 75 best players, except no, not because we needed that 76th person there. We needed that, that one extra person there because it was un un it, we couldn't decide. That seems crazy to me. Like that instantly negates the whole point of this list. If it's like the 75 best players for year 75, but 76 because, you know, we couldn't leave him off. We, we couldn't leave this guy off. So, I don't know. This is just weird to me. I think the fact that there's such a long list of snubs should show them and anyone that voted on this that something went t terribly wrong because that snub team could probably beat a lot of teams made up of, like, eight players on this list. Um, oh, and the other thing. I almost com completely forgot about this, too. They should have to say who voted for what and who voted for who because... I think it's a little ridiculous that these media and everyone gets to have, you know, so much control over stuff like this and especially to go back to like the all NBA stuff. Like they have so much control over that and then like you don't really get to see it. So I think that it should all be out there. If you're going to vote and participate in something like this, you should be prepared for your vote to be out there so people can react and people can see and then you can defend it and you can explain to someone to their face why you opted to go the way that you did. I think just kind of seeing a list that gets put out that says, hey, so-and-so isn't a top 75 player of all time, it's kind of hollow, it's kind of empty. Like if you can sit down and defend your statement, I think overall it makes for not only a better conversation, but it makes for you know a better and more appreciated list. So I don't know, let me know what you would do. Let me know who you think is the biggest snub or anyone that you were surprised about. Like, I was surprised Damian Lillard was on here, to be honest. I think he's great. I love him, but I don't know if he's a top 75 player. Um, I don't know. It's it's too slippery a slope. Let me know who, who you think should be on this list or what you think about stuff like this in the comments, and I will be back soon. Thank you.